What's my mother name? What's up guys, KW175 back with another Pokemon Duel video and we have a new gem sale, full gem sale, as we normally do at the end of every month at this point, but it's only going to be around for a couple weeks till the 14th, so actually it's, it's a, quite a while, but you want to jump on it as soon as possible so you can take advantage of those daily login bonuses. Uh, the 3,165 gems is definitely going to be the most value and then the 1,400 gems is the second best value you know they're pretty close so obviously you can only buy one of any of these uh, I know a lot of like the big whales definitely go for the $79.99 and then the $39.99 because they're so close in value and they get you it gets you almost to that you know 15,000 loyalty point tier so you can get all of the uh, monthly loyalty rewards fulfillment bonuses and the best login but um you know, you just need to take a look at what you're able and what you're comfortable spending on the game if you spend anything. Take a look and see how many points you're going to get. And then we can take a look at the monthly loyalty tiers and see where we're at. So we definitely went filthy whale mode again. And we're, we're getting ready, guys. We're getting ready for this new banner. It looks like it's going to be pretty insane with new figures, with a new meta, a new event, with a gratitude event, uh, possibly unlimited mega evolutions. Uh, and, you know, until they're knocked out, I would imagine. But we're sitting at 9,800 points for the $79.99. And if you take a look, you get your first EX cube at 1,000 points. So that's pretty good. And then you get another EX cube at 1,500 points. So I don't think you were able to get EX cubes that quick that soon. Um, I think there's a total of seven EX cubes. And um, yeah, so 2,600. You get an exclusive loyalty booster ticket, no EX cube. So some of these tiers, you don't get an EX cube. And then at 3,300, you get an EX cube at uh, 5,000. There's going to be another exclusive loyalty booster ticket. So you just need to try to take a look and see how many points you're getting for each gem stash and see how that kind of stacks up against what you feel comfortable spending on the game uh, if you're willing to invest any money at all. Uh, but generally, the uh, 9,800 or the 9,600 points is going to get you almost everything you're going to get six EX cubes. You're going to get three exclusive loyalty uh, booster tickets. And you're going to get 20 Carmenite a day included with an EX ingot and rare metal. So that's pretty good. Then 11,000 points. You're going to get a cube UX. So the you only get two more Carmenite. You don't get any exclusive loyalty booster ticket. But you do get that cube UX. Then if you look at the 13,000... You know, you get a, another ticket, but there's no UX or EX cube. So, and the monthly loyalty, or I'm sorry, the exclusive login bonus, or the extra login bonus, it doesn't really get that much better. So, really, going for these higher tiers, looking for that ex, uh, for that exclusive fulfillment bonus. Um, I don't know why I call everything exclusive, but yeah. And then the 15,000, you get that another EX cube and a UX cube. So, you guys just need to take a look. You know, divide the money by how many gems you're getting, and you can see what you're paying per gem. So obviously, the, the you know the higher the gem stash is, the better value, and just see how many points you're getting, see how far up you can go, and then try to make a, a game plan so you know you can be efficient with how much money you're spending and getting the most value. Um, these exclusive loyalty booster tickets, the banner, you know, this box that you use the tickets on, have been updated. So. Rantis is in here, Black Kyurem, White Kyurem, Guzzlord, um, you know, Kartana, all of the new Pokemon that we've seen recently, Kyurem, Lorantis, I think Electros and Ampharos was in there, maybe not, pretty sure Zorark and Beware was in there, wouldn't mind getting a Glade, I still need more Magnezone, I want to run a full Magnezone deck with Magnet Plates, I really hope uh, after this maintenance on the update on May 1st, I really hope they put the Magnet Plates the never melt plates the uh, what's the other one magnet never melt miracle seed i really hope all those plates are going to be in the new banner because um you know i need more magnet plates 
But yeah, I'm gonna have seven exclusive royalty tickets now. I had four that I've saved. I just got three from this new gem sale. So these are the resources that I've been saving for quite a while. We have 14 EX cubes. This is all pre uh, exclusive loyalty rewards. So 2000 Carmenite, I have 14 EX cubes, three UX cubes, 29 rare cubes, 47 uncommon cubes, 197 common cubes. Uh, so let's take a look. We got one EX cube, two EX cubes. Okay, we're gonna get two rare cubes, an exclusive loyalty ticket, three EX cubes. Now we're gonna get two more rare cubes, another exclusive loyalty ticket. So we have three EX cubes, two tickets. We have four EX cubes. <laughs> Five EX cubes, three exclusive loyalty booster tickets. And we're gonna get two more rare cubes. Six EX cubes, you know, that's insane. Like you used to only be able to get, I think four. And we get another EX gold ingot. And lastly, we get another EX metal. So let's go take a look, see where we are sitting at right now. 20 EX cubes. Now I didn't pull any new uh, UX cubes yet, but I may be getting one on, on the first. I'm not sure, I'll have to take a look, but um, yeah, that's pretty insane. We got a bunch of gold to exchange, 65 EX medals, 35 rare cubes. That's a chain level 10 rare right away. Uh, 47 uncommon cubes, 197. Like why does it take longer to chain level 10 a common figure? Like it seems like it takes a lot longer to chain level a common figure than it does an EX cube uh, figure. Like EX cubes come a lot easier, uh, or just the way the chain levels work. I don't know, it just doesn't make sense. But uh, yeah, we're ready guys. We are ready for the new banner, for the new figures. You know, I've been saving up. I don't really invest in figures and I'm not gonna be running in gym that they're not universal to be running in a lot of decks. And just from what we got right here, almost 180,000. We're sitting at 6.2 million. We're ready, guys. We are ready. I can't wait to see what these new figures are. And we're going to be able to make an insane deck, hopefully. Maintenance has begun. It's going to be running till 8 UTC. So to hold you guys over for this maintenance, for the new banner, for the new gratitude event, we're going to be taking a look at the in-game tournament that they called it. It's more like the Blitz, like what Rico called it, but it was the tournament for the two hours. So we're gonna be uh, covering those matches that I took part in. I only took part in a few, but we're gonna check those out and see how it went. So, okay, this is gonna be my first match in this quote unquote pre-tournament. Uh, I definitely like Rico's term, the Blitz, a lot more. But there's some ranking rewards. You know, if you get into the top 10, 100, 1,000, there's also achievement rewards for getting five wins. But all that aside, this is pretty much like gym, but there's no win streak booster. Like you're playing, you win, you get points, you're climbing up the leaderboard. You lose, you know, you lose some of that elo. And, you know, you're going to have to make up from that deficit. And you have two hours to climb as high as you possibly can in the leaderboard. I really hate this format for a tournament, to be, to be called a tournament. I like the idea of kind of having these blitzes. You know, it's kind of cool. I wish they ran it for 24 hours and let everybody register for a two hour slot. I like the fact that you only get two hours, but I think everybody should have had the opportunity to partake in this. And I don't really see how hard it would be to let people register for a two hour slot you know, for the 24 hours, you pick your two hour slot that's good for you, register, and then you show up and play. Like, I really like that idea of being able to register for a time slot. And I'm sure there's plenty of people around the world that there's gonna be enough people playing during that time. So I went up against a lot of Swablu decks and Rush decks. So I'm gonna kind of skip ahead. You know, we're setting up and now I'm in a position with my Celestula to try to go for this flame gun and get a double KO. Roll number two, never respin a good or a winning roll. And I had a winning roll, I had a good roll, but I respun it and it worked out. We got the double KO. So skipping ahead again, I'm gonna try to call signal surround the Swablu and we're gonna get the knockout regardless. So I'm like, okay, I'm gonna go Mega Ampharos. I'm gonna bring my Celestila back and try to go for another flame gun. Yeah, so 
They move forward with the Noibat. I'm going to go for it. Boom. That's pretty much GG, boys. I mean, like, they could have came back and tried the Whirlwind, my Feromosa. But, uh, you know, they didn't go for it. And then they would have had to, yeah, it would have it took some work. Yeah, it definitely would have took some work. But I got 28 points. 28 points for that win. So, let's take a look. Somebody's already at 1656. And, you know, that's what's kind of annoying about this matchup. Uh, I skipped another match. So, basically, right now, we're 2-0. This is going to be my third match. And, um, you know, see, we're going up against kind of lower-ranked players. And you're not going to be getting as many points. Just like in gym, you guys know that. Like, you're trying to climb up higher because you want to be able to get those trophies, right? For climbing in the top you know x amount of players so if you're getting lower ranked players you're not getting as many points when you win if you lose you're losing a lot of points and this is also encouraging people to kind of run cancer decks like i was really happy to see this guy running a normal deck i'm like cool this was the only normal deck that i went up against all the other decks were swablu decks and rush decks so Everybody that made it to the top of the leaderboard, like the top 10, were running rush decks. So, I mean, it's, you know, whatever, you have different metas and things like that. But, um, yeah, just wasn't a big fan. Not as, you know, for something to be called a tournament. Definitely, it's just, there's just too many variables. Too many variables. You know, matchmaking. Are you getting matched up with higher ranked players so you can get more points? Um, are your matches going very quickly? You know, are you getting bad RNG? Or is your opponent going to be turtling up with, you know, like a Tapu Fini or, you know, those kind of just annoying decks or with the Empoleon decks? And uh, these matches that just take forever. Because me and Fodder were talking in Discord, right? And I'm just going to kind of talk while you guys are, you know, watching what's going on here. But um, the top guy looking at how many points they had within the two hours like you would have to at least get i think 16 wins so for a 120 minute event we'll say 119 to make sure that that last win counts so you have to be done within those two hours like those matches can't even take seven and a half minutes it's like 7.4 minutes or something and i think that's like a straight win streak that's not like losing anything it's just, I don't know. It's insane. It's just, uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I think it, it, there's a lot more luck involved in with the, you know, the matchmaking, how quick the matches go. Obviously, you got to be skilled, running a rush deck, making plays, know your deck, and just get in, get out. But I don't know. So, you know, let's get back. Enough of me rambling. Let's get back into the action right here. So, I'm going to be going in for the attack with my Zerkatry. Zap Cannon's going to go off. Gengar is going to get knocked out. And um, I, I'm, I'm good with our position right now. I got my Nihiligo. I got my Coco. There's a lot of blue there. A lot of defense. Uh, you know, the, the poison it can give weight. The Nihiligo. And I'm in a position that I want to attack this Coco and get rid of it. And we do. So it's, it, I was actually pretty surprised. It seems like every time I'm attacking a Tapu Coco, just melly melly all day long. So we're going to press that Raikou back. He doesn't want to get surrounded. And our Zerkatry is going to land a miss. Zerkatry, come on, man. You're an Ultra Beast. You're not supposed to miss. So Homeward Light Lights is going to go down. Going to bring the Gengar back. I'm going to go after this Zapdos and try to uh, never respin a winning roll, but I do it. Roll number two, I've been breaking quite a bit. But uh, yeah, I wanted to get that Rendezvous because our opponent, they already used their Mega Ampharos. So we definitely want to start sending things to the Ultra Space now. Going after this uh, Suicune. <laughs> and Sheer Cold is going to go off, so... We're going to get knocked out. Not a huge deal, though. We're okay. We got our Ampharos back. Gengar is going to be swinging around. So, 
Yeah, I go Mega Ampharos here. And I believe I bring back my... Yeah, bring back my Zerkatry. Then I'm going to swing around and try to be aggressive with the Ampharos here. Gangrel's going to come down. Could potentially give us weight. All of us weight. So, uh, yeah, I definitely need to keep my Ampharos <laughs> away from that little pack there. But now, now we're good. We're good. Have you guys ever lost to uh, a Gengar's purple? Where it just gives your entire team weight? It's really annoying. And it can catch you off guard like you don't realize it. Uh, scoop Up would be really nice to get rid of that Suicune, but our Nihiligo should be able to hold it down. And we're going to get rid of that Raikou. And we're in a position that now we can, uh, we're almost one turn away from bringing another figure back onto the board. And he doesn't have a whole lot of defense. He's going to go in for the attack with the Gengar. And um, he's going to get weight. So I'm going to move up. We get our Celestila back. And I'm like, what? Like, why wouldn't you protect right there? So I'm going to go for the double chance. Flame gun. GG boys, hopefully. Eh, well, you know, that's a knockout. That's good. Just a forfeit win, so I don't really know what happened at the end there. It was a pretty good match up to that point, and uh, we're up to 15.82, so 3-0. 3-0, 15.82, three matches. Look how much time's left, um, and to be fair, I didn't sit there and grind the entire event. I think I played about an hour and a half of the entire event, so check out first place, Rush Deck, 17.32, 17.31, Rush Deck. So, I mean, it, you know, everybody kind of knew that you were going to have to be running a Rush deck. But, <laughs> another Swablu deck. I don't know, everybody says they hate the Ultra Beast deck. But I would much rather play an Ultra Beast deck than a Swablu deck. I don't know. It's just, the Swablu decks are so annoying. It's just like, hey, we just turtle up and we're going to negative million your team so everybody's doing zero damage. And then we're just going to run around, randomly attack crap, and put sharp beak plates down until we get super lucky and get lucky spins and make you do all of the offensive work. And we're just going to sit there and move back and forth. I don't know. Like, like Ultra Beast, yeah, with the call signal and stuff like that, it can be a little annoying. We're going to take the flame gun there. But, like I said, I think... like. The Ultra Beast, they're nothing even close to Deoxys. And there's they're no way near as annoying as the Swablu decks. Because the Ultra Beasts are, can easily be countered. They're, they just they rely on blue attacks. You know? And you have to think. Like that you have to be aware of what's in Ultra Space, you know, where Pheromos is. It, you know, if you have the Celestula in a position where you can rocket ride something, turn Feramosa into a 3 MP. If you get a Rendezvous, it's going to be a 4 MP. You know, you just have to be aware. Where Swabble, you just have to be a freaking math genius and know exactly what the heck's going on. Uh, you know, with the plus, with the minuses. And it's just really annoying that three uncommon figures can give you a minus 60. It's just, I don't know, it's really tough to deal with. But I'm going to keep attacking the Stuffle, because at least the Stuffle doesn't uh, have a damage bu uh, buff from our Coco. And I'm going to go for the double chance, try to get the uh, Rendezvous, and we are going to get it bye-bye Poplio. Yeah, like Deoxys, even after the nerf, like Deoxys is still really tough to deal with. Pre-nerf, being able to switch off the bench, I mean you could run three speeds down and just switch with the defense form switch with the attack form all they would do is just turtle up and move back and forth or just rush you and strangle you to death um you know it was it would go either way it, either they would just rush the crap out of you there's nothing you could do you could attack you couldn't knock anything out they'd win super quickly or it was a super stall match and it would just bounce back and forth back and forth and hurdle jump and just like slowly press you forward and yeah there's <laughs> ultra beast like i said nothing even close to deoxys decks
and I, I still think the Swablu decks are way more annoying. Um, Tapu Fini decks, like the, the Water Phantom decks, those are like straight cancer. The Empoleon decks with the three Empoleons, and uh, you know, now with the Kiram's, like running two Kiram into the Empoleons, like trying to freeze everything, or like the, the Koba sandwich, just like people will always find these like AIDS decks, you know, that just, I don't know. I just, I just want to play the game and, and pick matchups and make, you know, strategic moves and try to outplay somebody and battle each other and, and have it be like a fun match. Like winning isn't that important to me to where I'm going to sit there for 30 minutes and just jump back and forth or just turtle up and keep, and I have Finny so I can keep throwing people out onto the board, you know, or Deoxys or the Koba sandwich where... You know, you just turtle up and you YOLO one figure. If it gets knocked out, no big deal because you just get to throw another figure out. You guys know what I mean? I don't know. Uh, let me know in the comments. I, I'm just rambling on here, guys. But I don't know. I'm just kind of giving you guys my thoughts and opinions about kind of some discussions that have been brought up. And talk about the Ultra Beasts and comparisons of what's going on. I think the Ultra Beasts have a lot of counters. They had counters whenever they came out. There's even more counters. After this update on May 1st, there's going to be even more counters, uh, you know, especially for the Rush decks. So, yeah, I mean, Ultra Beasts, they're tough to deal with. And if they're getting the rolls that they need, then, yeah, I mean, you can be losing a lot of figures, especially to Rendezvous, which I'm going for right here. And we get it. And we do get the Rendezvous. But see... It's kind of like a temporary banish, though, because you can run Mega Ampharos. If you, you, like, you do have to have it. You have to have the right figures. Like, nobody said, like, having crappy figures, you were going to be able to compete in high levels against high-level decks. Um, that's the way Pokemon Duel is. It's always been that way. You have to have the right figures. The Freezer was really nice. But, yeah, I mean, a lot of people have been saying, like, you know, I cannot beat Ultra Beast decks. I cannot stand Ultra Beast decks. And there's counters, like, you know, run this figure, Mega Ampharos, uh, run a Pheromosa, run a Shiny Rayquaza. You know, well, I don't have those figures. Well, I mean, you know, you got to get those figures, you know, save up your materials, um, you know, save up your gems, open up on banners that have really good figures for the meta. Like, the meta is always going to change. That's why it's called a meta. You know, it's, it's not going to stay the same. When new figures are brought out, when... Uh, you know, stat adjustments are made, it changes, you know, it's an ever-changing thing, and to be able to compete at high levels, and to win consistently, you have to have some of the best figures, you know, it's just the way that it is, uh, but there's way more counters, there's way more things that you can do to prepare yourself for an Ultra Beast deck, and still play well against other decks, and we're going to get a forfeit win there. Yeah, Mega Ampharos, you can bring figures back. It's like a temporary banish, like I was saying earlier. You know, remember when the Dragons first came out? Like, even going up against a Dragon deck now, you know, if they're able to hit the damage, especially with Zekrom, imagine with a Magnet Plate, with the Altaria, with the Coco. You know, Zekrom can banish you, and you cannot bring him back unless you have, like, a Mega Altaria. But we're at a 4-0 and right now. And I just continue to ramble about my thoughts and opinions on this. Normally, I don't really do that in videos, but um, I just kind of wanted to just keep this video chill, show you guys some gameplay that I sped up for you. This is going to be our last match uh, going up against a Rush deck. So, Rush decks can shut down Ultra Beast decks pretty quickly. Um, you know, you got to set up right. So, let's see if we're going to be able to set up right against uh, this opponent. Uh, but just to kind of wrap up what I was saying previously. Um, you know, getting permanently banished by, like, a curse marker or the twins, even though people don't really run them now because of the rush and they're too slow, for one. But, um, you know, when you get sent to Ultra Space, at least it's temporary. At least there's plenty of figures out there that you can get, you know, uh, Shiny Rayquaza, Mega Ampharos, Pheromosa, or Terrakion to at least keep them from being able to call signal things back. You know, you can definitely counter the decks and, you know, running and, and make a good solid deck that can go up against other decks that are, you know, commonly ran. 
and, and do well overall consistently. Deoxys, you were not able to do that. <laughs> like, it just, it was impossible. Like, we had no hope until Sceptile, till like the Tropical Banner came out. And they were nerfed. And then it was like, thank you. And even then, uh, Rendezvous is going to go off. See you later, Zerua. Um, and the Coco is going to take the entry point. And uh, I'm going to go for the attack and try to get rid of it. Should be easy as long as it doesn't land Mellow Mellow Wish. And we do get the knockout. Here comes Speed back down. Just being super annoying. So we can definitely send our Feramosa. 4 MP is pretty nice. Sea Speed, I got a 4 MP as well. And I was really hoping for the call signal or a knockout. Because first battle, Feramosa doesn't get its damage halved. Um, and I believe the... Uh, the battle opponent doesn't get any damage uh, buff either if they're, you know, like with Coco or something like that or having an ability that can increase their damage. Just kind of sucks it's only the first battle. But, um, yeah, like, even then, Sceptile, though, what I was saying, Sceptile only had a 1 in 4 of rolling his double leap blade to be able to beat a Deoxys attack form, and the attack form would respin you. So then, so basically, you had to roll the double, you had to roll Leaf Blade four times in a row, which I think is like a 6% chance or something like that. So still, pretty low chances of being able to counter that figure. Like, Lunala was like the first figure that was like, if you get it to a chain level 10, to really just shove something in Deoxys Attack Form's face and feel confident that you could win. But then we got the Oracorio Pal style, which was able to give it those additional chain levels, and then Lunala still wasn't able to beat it. It's, uh, you know, we've fought Deoxys for months and months. The Ultra Beasts have only been around for a little while, and there's a ton of counters. So, that's all I'm going to say about it. That's all I'm going to say about it. Even if I didn't have the Ultra Beast figures, I would still feel the same way. Like, yeah, I would... It would be a lot harder to go up against them without having the right figures, and it would be frustrating. Um, because, you know, they're all UXs, really tough to get. They're really expensive, but... I mean that I mean that that's the competition that's the game you know like to be able to compete at high levels like you have to have good figures but um, there's a ton of people that have been in top 10 even came in first place uh, for a long time and that's gonna be a nice win that were free to play didn't have any of the top tier like super expensive best new figures and were able to shut down all those you know huge whales that spent a ton of money on the game so uh, that's all I'm going to say on the matter, but I'm really excited for the new banner to be coming. And we finished at like 258. Uh, we went 5-0. and um, He ended up, yeah, 1869. So you guys can try to figure out the math on that. On you know, And as you rank up and get more and, and higher and higher and more ELO, you're going to be getting less points. So I don't really know what you would average per game but it's gonna it takes a lot of wins I like I said at least 16 wins and I don't think you can lose any um, but it, it was okay it was whatever it was kind of fun we're gonna finish off with this booster ticket what are we gonna get a Grovile didn't even look like it was gonna be a rare but it was a nice pleasant surprise so guys I have more videos coming on the way definitely stay tuned to the channel subscribe if you're new and hit that notification bell so you don't miss my next video follow me on Twitter and sorry if I rambled and talked your guys' ear off let me know in the comments so what you guys think about what I was saying and until the next one later guys